Okay, so I received a package in our uh, delivery box out by the driveway today and that's not at all unusual because uh, I do 80% of all of my shopping online, including clothes. So a package was no big deal, but thinking it was something that I needed for the sawmill or a tractor or something around the farm, I brought it into my workshop, put it on my uh, island workbench here. And as soon as I kind of cut the package open, and I haven't taken it much beyond this at this point, I said to Coral, come on out here to the workshop and bring the camera. You've got to take a look at this. Let me back up a little bit more. Uh, I had seen an article a little bit ago about Timu and apparently they became very popular for their clothing fashions. Uh, you could buy what would normally be a hundred dollar item for something like $30. And yes, people are feeling very conflicted about this because on one hand, there's uh, allegedly issues around working conditions, lack of benefits, uh, long hours, et cetera, et cetera, in order to achieve the pricing that they do. But on the other hand, who doesn't want a $100 clothing item for $30 or $40 or $50? That starts to get really attractive. And so somehow I ended up on their mail list and uh, got a couple of ads and I started browsing around the site and of course headed for machinery. And being, I have, we have eight grandchildren, uh, what would the kids like? Well, you've probably seen grandson Lenny featured in a couple of videos, and I'll put a couple of the videos that feature him in on the end screen to this video uh, if you want to take a look. But he's four years old, and he's got great motor skills. He can easily uh, uh, play with remote control toys. Number two, Lenny loves equipment and machinery. Of all of the eight grandchildren, he takes a greater interest in the 82 Maple videos than I think perhaps all of the rest put together. He just loves watching dump trucks unloading, loaders loading, all of that sort of thing. So you get, get the point. And so I thought, wow, this is a great opportunity to browse some items. And for the princely sum of $140, it appeared that I could get a remote control uh, crawler, a dump truck, an excavator, and I think it's a front end loader. And uh, uh, yeah, look, look amazing. And thinking about the fun that Lenny would have with these, my idea was I'll drip one of these toys on him and uh, uh, in September, one in October, one in November, one in December, he's going to be in heaven. So that was the expectation. That was the objective. Now, what about the reality? Well, that brings us to the package. The package arrived in a bag and not a box. And so on opening it up, what's the first thing that I see here? And I have to tell you, this is the only item that I had removed before calling Coral out with the video. Now, that's kind of interesting. I did not cut that open. Somebody's been in the box. It's been resealed. And you know what? Even Lenny at four years old knows what a gift box is supposed to look like. And as I said to Coral a couple of minutes ago, this thing looks like it stops just short of looking like it's been run through an old fashioned ringer washer. So this is the front end loader, but let's take a look inside and let's see if it's any better or any worse. So the last thing I thought I'd be doing for 82 Maple would be a review of packaging. Let's see if we can even get it out of here. Okay, uh, so Okay, those have been thrown in there loosely. I don't think that's the way it was supposed to be packaged. Uh, doesn't look like anything's broken. 
Okay, we have our little front end loader. Wow, this is all scrunched up. Not very robust to begin with. Uh, actually, it's cracked over here. Yeah, I can put my finger through there. Okay, so that's not really a gift that I'm thinking I'm proud of giving, but it, hey, it is what it is. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so we've got um, the excavator. Wow, look at the crush on that box. Uh, and this one was sandwiched in between. Again, it's been opened, held down now with a piece of scotch tape. Um, yeah, I think, well, maybe that's the way they seal things. I don't know. Uh, and what else do we have here? Okay, here's our little rock truck. Yeah, maybe it's just the way they seal it. Just a piece of tape right there. Uh, doesn't make for a very robust uh, packaging when it's all in a bag like this, as opposed to a box. And so this little review of Timu started out with a critique of shoddy, inadequate packaging and uh, an item that had probably been returned before definitely open. Let's start at the other end of the lineup. Wow, we have a terrific little dump truck here. And so uh, everything complete, uh, nothing bent up, nothing broken, came with a little screwdriver, came with its charging cable. To charge it, you just lift up the front grill here, uh, there we go. And you extract the charging cable, plug it in, and you're in business. And pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, came with the instructions, uh, including English instructions. And let's see if this goes. Hey, that's pretty awesome. It steers. Oh, let's steer. There we go. That's operator error. That's not the fault of the truck. Now, let's uh, raise the dump box. Hey, that's not bad. There we go. I think that one gets a five out of five or a 10 out of 10 or a two thumbs up. I don't know. Okay, so I just had to jump in the middle of the flow here. <laughs> it's two days later and I'm out in the shop just bundling this stuff up for Lenny and I'm looking at the labeling. So this apparently, is an excavate truck and the brand name is Heavy. This here is a track type tractor. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Engineering vehicle series, as opposed to, to say construction vehicle series. Same here, but dump trucks, yep, that makes. And what we have is the brand name is Yigong. Uh, no caterpillar in this series. There we go. Sorry for the interruption. And hey, you know what? It's not good. It's not bad. Uh, translation is a difficult, difficult job on its best day. <laughs> Let's jump back into it. We're all good to go on that one. Uh, then we have the dozer. I was really intrigued by this. Very, very clever. Uh, so we can raise and lower the blade. I get so excited about the dozer functions, I forgot to say that it came with its charging cable, its screwdriver, everything worked. Just flick on the switch. And uh, now let's see what we can do here. Uh, forwards, backwards, uh, left turn, right turn. Hey, doesn't get any better than that. Again, packaging intact. Uh, not open, instruction manual, screwdriver, charging cable, all the good stuff. Uh, now let's move along to the excavator. So the packaging was not in great shape. It had taken a bit of a beating uh, in terms of the box. The exhaust stack was broken off. Not that uh, the four-year-old recipient of this gift is going to notice. And uh, uh, if I can figure this one out, Coral was running this one. She was having fun with it. And uh, yeah, forwards, backwards, turn. Hey, that's pretty awesome. And uh, oh yeah, we scoop and we can just dig. And so what we notice over here <laughs> is that this same remote control, yeah, look at this. Hey, 
<laughs> I can be two places at once. I need whatever Kimu is selling here, I can tell you that. This is too much fun. I can just stand here all day with this. Uh, now, uh, th this little front end loader, Coral is just reminding me, this one did not come with instructions. We figured it out though. We got the batteries in and we got it all going. And, and you know what? If it seems I'm being a little bit nitpicky, what I always think of is a parent or a grandparent that may not have a lot of mechanical skills, uh, stuff kicking around. And to ship something like this without the screwdriver, it did come with its charging cable. Uh, we had to borrow the screwdriver from the crawler dozer to, to go with this one. And, uh, and no instructions. And uh, they present the gift with great fanfare and now we have a project on our hands uh, to figure it out and an anxious recipient that just wants to play with it and, and make it do what I was doing here. There we go. Um, I just can't keep my hands off of this now. Um, and then worse, the first one that we opened, the most damaged box, the one that had been opened before, it was a bit of a puzzle without the instructions. The first thing I did, because it came with three rechargeable batteries, it had a charging port. I thought that maybe the batteries were already preloaded because I pulled all four screws here and could see no place for batteries. Without the instruction manual, uh, we took about five minutes, maybe we're a little slow at this, but to figure out you have to push this in and then lift up and I was lifting and concerned that I was doing the wrong thing and that I was going to break it, I would have had a lot of uh, comfort from knowing I was at least in the right area doing the right thing. And so here we go. Uh, oh, okay, now, I, now this control works both as well. That's okay, but you could really, uh, Lenny has a younger brother and so he can really confuse his younger brother who doesn't have his hand on the control and I can just see Lenny going like this and say, Daxon, uh, why are you doing that when Daxon isn't? Uh, so that works. And uh, oh, this also runs that. So I do need to turn this one off. They're operating on the same band. Uh, so this one articulates and now let's get it moving. Well, it's not moving. And now I think I know why that box uh, appeared to be opened. I think somebody got this. I think somebody returned it. I think somebody threw it in the wrong bin and it got sold again. So we're going to have to return that. Now the question becomes, for all of $27 Canadian, do I really return that or do I just get another one to take a chance? I don't know. There's lots of considerations here. So a couple of things. Uh, for any uh, business person or professional that is uh, face forward to the public, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. We've all heard that cliche, but assume that a parent had gotten just this package here and this is their first impression of Kimu. The box is rumpled, it's clearly been opened, it's tough to put together, there's no instruction manual, there's no tool, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, number two, again, there's the whole uh, allegedly ethical consideration. How is it possible to get something like this uh, so cheaply if the working conditions are really what they should be. And thirdly, I'm reminded of something a former business partner of mine used to say. The uh, sweetness of low cost is temporary, but the bitterness of poor product or quality stays forever. And so take away from it what you will. This is week 20 of my thousand week journey. I have some little takeaways of my own and the jury is still out for me on whether I will make another Timu purchase uh, this year, if ever. And uh, lots, to, lots to roll around. I'd be interested in your thoughts and comments. Put them in down below. Thanks for being part of my journey. <laughs> Are you excited about that? Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs>
Today. A prodigy. Yeah, a prodigy. Stand back. Gramp has got his powerful, powerful mail gun. Take a look at this wood. This has really nice angles come around this side, and it has bark on it and stuff here. And you know where this came from? A tree. A tree, you're right. And it came from forest, the tree. So I have these three pieces of wood plus this one, which we're not going to use today. But hey, we want people to see what we're actually doing with this, right Lenny? And we're going down to do a project for Grandma Corky at the Relocated Chicken Coop. Forrest the Tree is going to work with us. Thank you for inspecting the chicken coop for safety. Yeah, Grandma, I think that we're going to put it right up here, Lenny. Okay, thanks for helping me, buddy. Wait, are you going to cut it now? We're going to cut it now, and here we go. You ready for this? Okay, cover your ears. <laughs> the cuts are done. We're off and rolling, and I bet you're driving. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Okay. 